what can we do to start journaling from a leadership standpoint to raise that self-awareness? Most people don't understand the value. And so they don't do it. They're like, yeah, journaling, I heard it's good, but I don't really, whatever I've heard these sayings, journal, 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 what about it? So the utility value in journaling and what journaling does is it helps you practice extracting your own inner wisdom. So as a leadership coach, when I'm working with individuals, you know, AJ, I just noticed this, you know, you swallowed a few times, uh, the topic is emotional. Um, what did you notice? Did you notice that you swallowed? Um, was there something going on with that? So I may, I may ask a body question. I may ask, hey, as we've been talking this conversation, there's this theme of this, it's come up a few times. You know, what's your thoughts around that? Like, oh, I didn't notice that theme or I didn't notice I did that. So journaling gets you in this practice of asking questions. So moving from statements to questions. So, so many times in life, I'll go back to uh, my 17 year old driving around the corner with the music blasting. I can make a statement. I can't believe he's doing this again. I've told him several times. And now because of that, I'm going to go down there and yell at him. Or I can say like, Ooh, I wonder what's going on. Uh, how often does he do it? You know, where did he just leave the gym? You know, is somebody else or is he, you know, is he trying to, I don't know, like what's going on? Let's go explore. So we're actually moving from, from judgment to curiosity. And so what helps with moving from judgment to curiosity is moving from statements, making statements, whether it's an individual showing up late, whether it's uh, somebody not meeting an expectation. And that's where conflict essentially comes in, unmet expectations, making statements to being curious. And so curiosity shows up in asking questions. And so in journaling, you start practicing the art of asking questions and you start with yourself. Once again, everything starts with you. So the art of asking questions, know why questions. And this is the biggest thing out there because I know some folks out there have made why and they're the five whys and all these whys. I have nothing against any of that. How I look at that is that it is a great start. So if you're like, hey, I'm really, I'm thinking about doing jujitsu. Awesome. You show up, you get a, you know, you do some stuff, you get a white belt. And then over time, you know, you get stripes and then you start doing other things. That's where why questions fall in. Like, I want to start asking questions. Hey, why questions? Sure. That's a great like white belt place to start. But now if you want to like continue and develop this, this art, we actually move away from why questions. And there's research on actually diving into and constantly asking why question creates a negative feedback loop. So we move from why questions to what questions. Once again, which takes time and practice. So even for me, it's simple in language where I'm like, oh, why just in a conversation? And now I've done it so many times where I have to reframe it to a what. And it becomes difficult because now you're moving sentences around to form it. So it takes a lot of practice. And then you notice because what is a, is a knowledge question? What has motivated both of you to continue this podcast for this long? Vice, why have you continued this podcast for so long? And so the other thing that why questions do is it tends to put people on the defensive. Right. AJ, why'd you ask me to come on your podcast? AJ, what about me led you to asking me about your asking uh, me on your podcast? So it's a different. So just that that first word reframes how the individual receives it. And so same thing for yourself. So if I'm sitting there journaling, you know, why did I do this? Oh, because you're a loser. Well, why did you do this? Because you're, you know, so you like, you can really create a self spin up even in your own journaling. So no why questions. Stream of consciousness is the easiest way to start. So just sit down, pick a place, just like any other goal. I want to work out, you know, probably you're probably not going to start out working for working out for an hour. With journaling, I'll ask clients, uh, you know, what can you commit to? Oh, I could commit to 20 minutes, you know, every morning or every evening. I'll go, awesome. How about five minutes? <laughs> and I'll just, I'll, I'll slash it because because with goals, you have to calibrate new goals. 
There's a calibration in there. And so I'll slash it because all I want them to do is start doing it and see the value in it and get the, get the, the repetitions in the practice. And then I'll create a window. How about three to five minutes? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, is that doable? They're like, oh yeah, it's totally doable. And even with that, that still takes, there's a week they'll come back, nod and journal. And then I hold them accountable. And then they start journaling a couple of times. And then it starts growing and expanding. And then they start seeing the utility value and they start going through and like, oh, wow. And now it prompts our conversations as well. So we'll start talking about the things that comes up in their journaling. And they're like, hey, I notice I keep going back to this one event every time I sit down to journal or every time I go to journal, I avoid it. And I'll even ask questions about that because they're now thinking about certain things when they go to journal which is, once again, we're just extracting information and helping them dive into themselves. So the key to journaling is it's you start the art of asking questions and you learn how to really excavate your own inner wisdom.